Hi, my name is Margret Posch. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the Java 4 repetition statement. 4 repetition statements are also often called for loops. You use a for loop when you have a code segment that should be executed not just once, but multiple times. Let's look at an example. Here I have a for loop that prints hello world three times. The first line is called the header of my for repetition statement. It decides how often I should print hello world. The rest is called the body of the for repetition statement. It is enclosed in curly braces and can include one or multiple statements. Let's have another look at the header. In my header, I define a control variable. This is a special variable that controls how often the body of the for loop is going to be executed. In the header of the for loop, you can distinguish three segments. Segment A declares my control variable and initializes it, in our case, with zero. Segment B is a Boolean expression. My control variable is compared with three. If it is less than three, then the body of the for uh, loop is going to be executed if it is not less than 3, then the for loop terminates. Section C. Here, the control variable is going to be updated. In our case, it is going to be incremented by 1. Needless to say, for loops cannot only be used to print hello world three times. They can be used to execute all kinds of statements let's say n times. So let's look at a full repetition statement in a more general way. We start with the keyword for, and this is followed by parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we have three sections that are separated by semicolons. The first section is the initialization expression. It initializes the loop's control variable. In our case, this was integer i gets assigned the value 0. So the next section is the loop continuation condition. It determines whether the loop should continue executing. In our case, this was a comparison where I checked whether i is less than 3. The last section is the increment. It modifies the control variable. In our case, this was i++. Next, I would like to make a walkthrough where I show you what happens when a for loop is executed. On the right hand side, I will keep track of the current value of i and also of the output. At this point, i has not been declared, so it has no value yet. Nothing has been printed, so there is no output yet. But this will change in a moment. I just declared and initialized i with 0. You can see in the right hand side i is 0. So the first segment in my for loop is only executed one single time. From now on we are going to check is i less than 3? If yes, execute the body and then update. And we repeat. We check, is the latest i less than 3? If yes, 
execute the body, etc. The moment my loop continuation condition is false, the for loop terminates. So let's see how this looks like. I'm checking, is 0 less than 3? Yes, it is. I'm going to print hello world. You can see the output on the right side. And I'm going to increment i, which is now 1. I'm back at my loop continuation condition. I'm comparing 1 with 3. 1 is less than 3. This is true. So I print hello world. You can see the second output line on the right side. And I'm going to increment i, which is now 2. Once again, I'm comparing. Is my i less than 3? Yes, 2 is less than 3. I'm going to print hello world. We have three output lines at this point, and I'm going to increment my i, which is now 3. Once again, I compare my i to 3. But now, i is no longer less than 3. My loop continuation condition is false. And this terminates not only the for loop, it also brings this short video to an end.